This video will contain spoilers from the off, so remember, you've been warned. Well, Mickey is back as the Lincoln lawyer, and it's safe to say that after a first season that looked like it was going to be difficult to be topped in terms of excitement and the gripping nature of it, this one managed to do it in the space of five episodes. With multiple cases, twists and turns, and an ending that left us on a massive cliffhanger, let's recap break down, and explain all that there was to take away from this first part of the season. So let's get into it. Here is the Lincoln Lawyer Season 2 Part 1 ending explained. The completion of Jesus Menendez's case. When this season first started, it felt like it was going to be centered around the cliffhanger that we had at the end of Season 1. The mystery man with the tattoo on his arm that was responsible for the murder of Martha. The case that Jesus Menendez was originally wrongly convicted for, but it turned out that we only had two episodes that were focused on that, and I think that was the right move for the show as it could have felt too much like a repeat of what we previously saw. Instead, we saw a slight twist occur, and that the real murderer was in fact the individual that Mickey represented in the first episode, who was arrested for breaking into a house, Russell. However, Russell wanted to make sure that Jesus was sent back to jail in order to keep his name out of the authorities' eyes. Russell hired Mickey as a lawyer so that he'd be able to keep client confidentiality at the forefront and prevent him from going to the authorities over the fact that he knew that he was in fact the killer. So instead, we saw Mickey work on a plan. And in the true Lincoln lawyer fashion that he has, he created the perfect one. This plan was to essentially make it so that Russell wouldn't be able to turn down the opportunity of killing the person that got away on the original night. This was glory days. And with Mickey insinuating that the police should keep an eye on her, they stormed her apartment and ended up catching him in the act, which ultimately put that story to bed, which was definitely appropriate, leaving Jesus Menendez to be off the hook and to be able to live his life freely. The Ending As we embarked onto the ending of the final episode, we saw that the main case that was being worked on by Mickey, which was focused around his new love interest Lisa being accused of murder, the murder of Mitch Bondurant. This was an individual that was heading up the construction that was happening near her restaurant, and she was previously given a restraining order for being violent towards him, hence why she was the main suspect in the murder investigation. This season was very much about, did she do it or did she not, and asking us that question. And it seems like that's going to be something that's going to be just as prevalent as we enter the second part of season two. There were a few discoveries that were made along the way which were quite suspicious. For example, the hammer was missing from the tool set that she had in her home. She was seen at the location of the murder scene. And then the biggest one of them all, which came right at the end. And that was that there was blood of the victim which was found on her gardening gloves that were in her property. This ultimately meant that the judge had seen enough for the preliminary hearing, and it was enough to take it to trial in front of a jury, something which it seems the next part is going to be focusing on, seeing as though we saw it in the trailer. The final thing that we saw in the season was that Henry, an annoying individual who was looking to make a podcast about the murder of Mitch and the involvement that Lisa had within it, ultimately went against the legally binding contract that Mickey had, which essentially stated that he had final say over the rights to her life story when it came to the production of it, something which I didn't even know was a thing and he went ahead and posted the podcast anyway. It was here where it was revealed that Henry most likely stole the contract that Mickey had, as it wasn't in the folder that was in the back of his vehicle. Mickey doesn't store any of his legal documents in a digitized form, as he fears them being stolen or taken online. However, the exact thing that he feared happened. But then it got even worse. After seeing that the document was missing, he turned around and there were two individuals that were there waiting for him. They then proceeded to beat him up to the point where he was unconscious, and it got me thinking, who could they be related to? Well, there are a couple of different options for who it could be. Russell did say that if anything happened to him or if he went back to prison, then he'd find a way of having Mickey or his family hurt. So it could be tied back to that. Or it could be connected to Hector Moyer. We previously heard that he was involved in the cartel and he was in LA looking to expand. But with his name being put forward to Maggie, word could have got around and this could be some kind of warning to Mickey. Or could it have something to do with Alex? That's still an area that we didn't delve that deep into. So who knows, maybe they're involved here. Or the final option is that it could well be related to Jeff, Lisa's ex-husband. There was a lot of mystery that was going on surrounding why she didn't want to reach out to him and what happened in their marriage, something which I think we will find out about in the next part of the season. 
Jeff basically said that he wanted to stay out of it, so maybe this could be some kind of warning or message to Mickey, and that Jeff is somebody that is not to be messed with. The severe injuries that Mickey endured will most likely affect his ability to be able to represent his client in the immediate future, so I do wonder what's going to happen there. I think Lisa has a dark past that she's not telling Mickey about. That paired with the quietness of Jeff shows that there must be a lot of things that she's hiding. Plus, she kept on lying, so maybe there is more than meets the eye. Cisco and Lorna Cisco and Lorna had an interesting story in this season, and it was all about trust as they were setting out to get married. However, Cisco's dark past was coming back to haunt him, and he was looking for a way of cutting ties with the Saints biker gang that he used to be a part of. The individual that initially protected Cisco, Kaz, was informing the police of criminal activity that was going on at the bar that they go to. However, Cisco soon realized, and in order to get on Teddy's good side, he let him know about the raid that was going to be happening, whilst also keeping Kaz out of the way and getting him a new identity so he'd be able to live his life safely and out of trouble. So Cisco is now well and truly a free man. He has no more debt, and he no longer has the hold of the saints over him. So he's able to live the life that he's always wanted with Lorna, as they set out to embark on married life together. Overall review I thought this season of the show was pretty good. It's not the best thing on TV, don't get me wrong, but there's nothing really like it that's out there at the moment. I found Lisa to be an extremely frustrating character to watch. She's literally facing a life sentence, but she's going against her lawyer's advice and listening to Henry in order to get the podcast published and risks jeopardizing everything that Mickey had been working on. It made no sense to me, and it made me dislike the character a little bit, which I think goes against the show slightly as she should be an individual that you're rooting for, as we don't know whether or not she's innocent. I also wasn't really a huge fan of Maggie. She was extremely bitter about Mickey's fame, and then she got all jealous about him spending a night with Lisa despite the fact that she's been seeing somebody else for a while, so it was a bit odd. I also found some of their encounters and pieces of dialogue a little bit cringy, such as when they were at the food truck with the sharing of the dumplings. I'm so glad that they progressed on from the story with Russell, Martha, and Jesus because it felt like it was concluded in a natural way. It was great watching Mickey and his unique approach to cases and the courtroom, so it does make an interesting, entertaining watch. The story is most definitely gripping, and I am genuinely questioning if Lisa committed the murder, which I think is the sole intention of what the creators of the show would have wanted us to have felt. I also really liked the side plots that occurred, such as Cisco and the Saints, and also Lorna's development of her career and the focusing on the wedding. I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen when the show returns for part two of season two in a month's time. So I guess until then, we can only theorize. So, there you have it. The Lincoln Lawyer season two part one ending explained. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, and Character Breakdowns, then click on the i button, or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of Season 2 Part 1? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.